Hi, my name's John Chidgey. I'm here to talk about some engineering practices, this time relating to testing, test specifically. Engineering design as a process starts with a definition of the problem that we're trying to solve. So we want to define the problem itself, uh, research particular solutions. The requirements, of course, need to be set first. And when we develop a design, we need to have a design that meets those requirements that have been agreed. So once that's designed, we can then develop a solution. And sometimes we may need to develop a, a trial or a proof of concept, sometimes just referred to as a POC. Either way, when that's done, we at some point need to test. Once it passes testing, then we can complete the installation at scale or do a full live production deployment of whatever it might be. So in the end, testing is an integral part of what we do and an integral part of the engineering design process. But what is TEST exactly? TEST aims to validate that the implementation has complied with the design intention and all of the details in that design meet the requirements that were set and agreed at the beginning. TEST can be thought of as a series of screens. Screens as in like screens of mesh of different sizes. Each screen or test type uh, will have a maximum test coverage of defects or bugs, if you prefer to call them that, uh, that it can find. And each of those will test a given process or function in the system or the subsystem that you've designed and developed. So each screen, when it's applied, will have that test effectiveness. And you can measure that test effectiveness to an extent. In large scale manufacturing, this is often calculated in detail and tracked uh, through test processes. Assuming there's a functional specification that's sufficiently detailed, it should be possible to create a testing screen that has 100% test coverage. When it's applied, it's also possible to achieve 100% test effectiveness. And, and a good example of that is if you have a safety system with a safety uh, logic solver that is tested with every possible combination or 100% test coverage and 100% test effectiveness. So you may ask, well, if it's possible to do 100% test coverage and test effectiveness, then why don't we do that by default all of the time? And it's simply a consequence of cost versus time against the scope in question and the consequences of making a mistake. The key thing to remember about test though, in this context, is that it's not about the process of test, it's about the people that execute the test as well. The best laid test plans, if not correctly followed by the people executing the test, will ultimately yield a poor result in test effectiveness. So in automation systems, for example, uh, certain test types that we may have, a few to start with, like I.O. testing of uh, instruments and indicators, just testing that the input outputs are reading correctly in the controller. Beyond that, we also have high-level communications buses, for example, Modbus, PropyNet, for third-party devices. HMI layouts, whether that's layer 0, 1, 2, or 3, HMI graphic details, menu systems. Alarm audits against a master alarm and set point database, making sure that matches live production is another form of test. Uh, process stability is another example for flow controllers, let's say, level controllers. Sequence tests are another example whereby I have a startup sequence and a shutdown sequence, ensure that it does start up and shut down through all the different combinations and that the interlocks from step to step work correctly. There's also manual device controls. And this form of test is simply the override of the control system to an extent whereby we put a device into manual and ensure that it starts and stops or if it's a variable speed or variable position device that it proceeds to that set position or set speed. Cascade control test, for example, low select and high select, if there's multiple cascaded controllers fed, fed into uh, a controlled device, making sure that the low select is selecting correctly. But that's just a short list. There's many, many more than that. Certain test scopes in automation are quite common. So for example, point to point is often a ref referred to for simple systems, uh, input to output and checking comps. That is to say the input on this side uh, results in an output on the other. A point to point test also with electrical wiring is quite common. 
Local control tests also are done generally in fields where we want to completely bypass the control system. Sometimes there's electrical switches that will bypass the output run command from a controller. And in those particular cases, we will do a local control test where the local manual push button uh, directly drives the device in question, for example. But the more interesting one is the end-to-end. -end. And when I say end-to-end, -end, I mean essentially all layers in the stack, to use a software term. Uh, everything from the HMI all the way down through to the end device that's acting on the process inputs. Every single link in the chain must function, otherwise the results will not work as designed. So end-to-end -end functional testing is by far the best catch-all level of testing for all defects. Incremental testing, however, is something that we ultimately have to do because jumping straight to end-to-end -to -end test is not always the best strategy. Certain defects are easier found earlier in the design process as well, so this would help. And hence we have factory acceptance testing. Despite the fact that the testing doesn't always happen in a traditional factory, it's based on a replication as close as possible to the live production environment that you're working on. And it's typically done standalone in a sandbox, again, to use a software term. Integration FAT is the next level up beyond that. And it intends to integrate all of the third-party devices that interact with the system, whereby the logic or the displays are drawing on, reading or writing to the data to those third-party devices. This is a very important stage, especially if you have a complex controller, such as uh, an external generator. Uh, sometimes it's a data interaction between two different control systems. Uh, the mapping of the data points, the polarity, the data formats are very, very important to make sure that they match and align and are tested thoroughly. A site acceptance test is ultimately the end goal, whereby you are at site, in a manner of speaking, sometimes perhaps not physically, but your implementation has been put onto the real world system, at which point then you are using your live production environment. Whenever defects are found at any stage, all the relevant and related tests need to be rerun and re-executed because we don't know that the fix that we've applied hasn't detrimentally impacted other associated logic or components of our design. This applies at the FAT and the integration FAT stage as much as it does at the SAT stage. If we're doing our tests thoroughly, as we incrementally test during the engineering design process, there should be less defects found at each subsequent stage. If there are more defects being found, then there's, I'd suggest, a problem with our test effectiveness and our test coverage. Some of the common gotchas worth mentioning, code review, for example, catches formatting and consistency defects, but it's not particularly effective at catching logical defects. Some people put too much faith in code review as a test method. Simulators for communications interfaces used for end-to-end -end testings will, will rarely find interface defects. In essence, you need to attach it to the real thing, to be sure. Straightforward changes aren't exempt from functional test requirements. Just because the change itself seems straightforward, requires minimal effort, doesn't mean that you are exempt from running a test of, against its functionality. Visual inspection is another gotcha, and it is the least effective form of test. Visually inspecting anything is not a measure of function. There are plenty others, but that is just a short list. So things to consider. First and foremost, the earlier that we find a defect, the cheaper it is to fix it. And it's far less likely that an incident will ultimately occur due to an error. So questions you may consider, does my test plan fully exercise the functionality relating to the change that I'm making and any associated logic or control that could be impacted by this change? Am I actively testing the final deployed change on live production system? Testing and test records are also an essential part of management of change processes.
and witnessing tests with the right people will pay off in the long run. Tick and flick exercises are never okay. Ultimately, in engineering design, test is a critical component. If we do it properly, it ensures that we have a solid, well-delivered result that meets the requirements that were set in the beginning. If we don't do it, we're inviting the opportunity of defects realizing in our production system that could lead to incidents. Thank you very much for your attention.